It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. Why do I come to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. Oh, there you are, finally! Where have you been? My sister's trial is tomorrow! Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. You're the famous defense attorney, Mia Fey! Uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. So, who are you? The coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right. Right. <gasps> Wait! You're the Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was the murderer, though. Ugh, oh, that's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please! Please, I'm I'm out of time! But I'm just- Please, you have to help! It, it's my sister! Maya? Could it be? Okay, I'll hear you out. Really? Oh, thank you so much! My name's Emma, Emma Skye. I'm a scientific investigator. You're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of, uh, jumpy. Or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known, at my age no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you could call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age no less. Great, another future professional in training. So you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? I excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's a good goal to have, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically, don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure can't falter for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing my research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. So, what's this about a case? You said there's a trial tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. Just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right. I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring her Mia Fey since my sister asked for her specifically. Apparently Mia Fey was a few years below her in school. So, she went to the same school as me. She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney and... Well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Mia... yeah, I thought it was a little strange when I saw you too. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Hmm? Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But, but she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister, before I can dredge up even more bad memories for her. Hmm. I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Guard, 
I thought I told you I didn't want any visitors. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. It's, it's just your sister- No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year, hmm? Uh, I, I, I understood, ma'am. What was that all about? Hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing. Look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? You know me. Mia mentioned you. I've heard... quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry. What exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana. Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Y you're a prosecutor? Two sisters. One a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma? Lana? I mean, they're just like... Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? So you're a chief prosecutor? That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job, and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities, in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this. I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Ugh, time to change the subject. Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her. Emma told you that too, did she? Well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! It was in law school. I was in my third year, and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong, and she'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. I was the best there was. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. More to the point, Mr. Wright. There's something you should know from the start. W which is? The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Wait, but the suspect? The suspect is- Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21st at 5.15 p.m. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. That was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. In the prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk? Classy. I was arrested on the spot. Caught red-handed, as it were. My, my. So who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By... you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh oh What? Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn! Well, Mr. Wright, as you can plainly see, I am admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say that there's no way you can take this case. None. But Lana! You... You were always this way, weren't you? You never think of anyone but yourself! I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know! So how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I... I hate you, Lana! Mr. Wright? Y yes 
I believe our discussion here is ended. The rest, I leave to you. You mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to her crimes, yes, but... But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here. And I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know. Honestly, I never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle. Always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. I should probably investigate the scene of the crime. Let's go check out this underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Oh, okay! So, this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone! Keep up the good work! Hey! What are you thinking? Well, they are going to be my co-workers three years from now, after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes, right? I'm trying to not stand out too much here. Hey there! You expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? Partner? What do we have here? Looks like a Bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Folks got to learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. M Mr. Marshall! Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, and the gold mine is evidence. If you're fixing to mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? You head along home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Was that a... Ombre, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of. Sort of? Yeah. He's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems? Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. Hmm. I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. The sheriff's back. Like I said before, this here is our claim. You best be moseying along. Unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Ah, scary! C could you tell us just one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well, the little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? Please! No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prospector's office. Might just find you a cerveza you like. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when for that matter? Note to self, look up Vittles, Saloon, Cerveza. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like. Just keep your paws off our claim. Right. Great. Great! Maybe there are some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out! Hmm, this wall is in our way. It's got a faucet for water. <gasps> Wait, I know! This wall is merely a facade, hiding the truth. This is no wall, but a water tank. I fail to see how it makes any difference either way. What's with this oil drum? Looks like it's filled with water. Uh, uh, it, it's heavy. I can't even budge it. 
touch it! <sighs> this drum over here is on its side. Wait, I know! I'll hide in here and do a stakeout! I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious. <gasps> here, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears! No, my ears! Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey! What did you just say? See? You can hear just fine. The phone's broken. Excellent deduction, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Oh, look! A stylish glass-walled room up there. Very nice. You could probably see the whole parking lot from there. It says, security. Perhaps it's a cafe? Huh? Cafe security. Hmm. Yeah, that must be it. Let's check it out later. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I think that's probably just a security office. <laughs> you know, I scored a 97 on my science test the other day. Too bad they don't have a test for common sense. <gasps> Look! A door! This must mean something. I'm not sure that doors mean anything. No! It won't open! A mysterious lock. I failed to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Aha! Uh -huh. Look, a ladder. Um, that's a step ladder? What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. Scientific? Huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. She's probably looking for clues in everything everywhere in hopes that she'll find something to help her sister. Maybe I should step up my own game then. Hmm? What's this? A wallet. Um, excuse me, officer! W wait What are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet. So I'm handing it over to the police. I don't believe it! This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. Let's at least look inside and find out who it belongs to first. There's an ID in here. It says, Detective Bruce Goodman. ID number 5842189. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly! <laughs> They're the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Detective Bruce Goodman. ID? Yabba Dab. See? Wouldn't that be better? Yabba Dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. <laughs> exactly my point! <laughs> Doesn't take much to amuse her. Excuse me. Were you two all set? Us? What's this? Who's she? Wait, you're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene! Hello. Half and half, was it? Oh, um, thanks. And you, sir? Y yes Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off-limits to anyone without clearance, especially passers-by. Or are you officers? Um, no. But you... you don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days as a cough-up queen are over. C cough up Huh? <laughs> you know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. Yes. <laughs> All the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, you are a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder. The stabbing of that detective. What?! You mean, you're the witness my sister was talking about? Please, cough-up queen! Tell us what happened! The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Yes, ma'am! Yipes! She means it! Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Miss Star? 
I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no Only true connoisseurs can understand. The kind you can only tell someone who has tried General So's Trilobite lunch set. Uh, never mind. You win. Ugh, I don't even want to appreciate part of the Trilobite's flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. The security room up there. I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So, to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis. Not. So, what exactly was it that you witnessed yesterday, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield that knife so... Oh, her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. Y you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife echoes solidly- Wait a second! You know Lana Sky? <laughs> of course. It's quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Somehow I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday, every week, is salmon. Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? <laughs> you should know, then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of iniquity. Evil ones? Prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. Ugh, what a farce. So there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday? I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, <laughs> evil? Young miss, mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the Cough of Queen. Ugh, you. The most heinous of all the evil ones. The one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. Huh? Really? Really what? I'm totally confused. Only one thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. Did you have a bad experience with a prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some... hostility. Hostility? <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike. And the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in chowder. I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That'd be a sure cause of food poisoning. Scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor. But now I'm not so sure. But this conversation isn't really going anywhere. And we still got a lot to look into. Well, if you'll excuse us, Miss Star, we've got a, uh, full platter we have to deal with today. <laughs> I'd imagine you do. Come on, Emma. Maybe we should check out room 1202. It's our only lead at the moment. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. 
Whoever's office this is, he must be a real stuck-up jerk. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? <gasps> ah! Mr. Edgeworth! Do you know him from somewhere? Of course! I'm his biggest fan! My sister introduced us once, and it was one of the greatest days of my life! Right. Her sister was the chief prosecutor, after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. N no! Uh, did I? No, no, it was just a... Mr. Wright here. Uh, he hey, don't blame me. W we're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. That would be my car. What of it? What? Y your car? So the body was found in your car? Go ahead, say it, Wright. You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less? N no, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, uh, she didn't do that. I mean... So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Y yes, sir. Emma Skye. It, uh, it's nice to meet you again. Now, that didn't sound forced at all. Ah, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit, it was a surprise to me, too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still is that now I'm forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. But wait! What did you say? Lana Skye is the chief prosecutor. The top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time where there weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy! Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like that. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's got to be a story behind that one. I've been wondering, what the heck is that thing? It has a big K on it. Uh, <coughs> the prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors Trophy. It's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. K stands for King? You have a problem with that? I didn't design the bloody thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like Employee of the Month, only better. Well done, Edgeworth. You must be proud to be the King of Prosecutors. Oh, congratulations, King of Prosecutors! Please stop saying that. So in other words, you were the best of the best this year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why is that? I had to go to the police department ceremony to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, correct? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Why is the shield broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, <laughs> right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award. For better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Could you tell me more about yesterday? The day of the murder. Yesterday was the annual cleaning day of the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's where you got the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's very precise. 
People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. This is the parking stub from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back? What, Wright? I'd appreciate it if you'd direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. How well do you know the defendant in this case? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right. I remember. Two years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. Wh what? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I kept in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Um, Edgeworth. What? Are you sure you didn't do it? Come on, can't he take a joke? You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. Um... Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, Sky, sir? No, sir! No name of that kind, sir! Not in this report, sir! Mm. I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir! But, but sir! I, I'm just following orders, sir! They, they told me to bring this to you! I, I wasn't aware of the peculiars of your arrangement with us, sir! Give me your name! Uh, uh, y yes Yes! Sir! M -M meekins sir! Officer Meekins! Right. Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Uh, but, but sir, I, I, I didn't know! Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Right. Y yes, sir! Sir? Get he caught me off guard! As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. Well, let's do as he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as that patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down at least. But we better get going all the same. To the police department! Whew, we're finally here. Why would they put the detective so far away from the prosecutor's office? That took almost 30 minutes by taxi, and traffic wasn't even that bad. Hold on. What's that? Disturbing! Why does it undulate like that? This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright. You know a lot about the police department. Hmm. Weird. He seems familiar, somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. Look next to it. Someone appears to be... dancing with the Blue Badger. Uh-oh. He noticed us. He sure is running over here fast. Hey! Pow! What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Especially considering that there's a pretty important case going on. What? Um... Well, uh... Then why were you dancing over there with... Uh, whatever that is. What, the Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. You made that thing, Detective? The Chief threw together some designs, and I just did my thing, pal. N nice work. It's battery-powered so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dance, dance, dances until the batteries die. Poor Blue Badger. Fated to dance until he drops. Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. So what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, 
nothing, really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. What did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. That's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor moiter anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being let into criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. <laughs> I mean, they're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the Paginates down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. A patrolman! He's in charge of a crime scene! It's on Hoyter, pal! Detective Gumshoe? What can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal! This is a detective's ID card! You can't just keep that! You have to turn it into the police! It's people like you that get me into so much trouble all the time! Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Mm, sounds familiar. Ah, my mistake. But don't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman, he's the victim! That's what I thought. So, this ID card belonged to the victim. He was a detective like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too, but Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but point is the chief prosecutor, Sky, called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You'd better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor's confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office, and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yeah, well, no. Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. But what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal. Can I, uh, speak to you for a second? Why is this little coil so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. Lana Sky's sister? Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like fate. Huh? It's just a sensitive issue with us these days. <clears throat> About yesterday, uh, were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. And of course, Mr. Edgeworth got the King of Prosecutors Award, too. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the King of Prosecutors Award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um... I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgot. But I was proud of Mr. Ridgeworth for winning that award. Even if he's got naysayers in the prosecutor's office. I take it you've heard about the scene of the murder. Found it, Mr. Ridgeworth's car. Stabbed with Mr. Ridgeworth's knife. What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... No, I mean, sure. Of course someone else really did it. Someone who must have... Uh, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? Uh, he's in a tough spot again. Again? Well, it all started with the moiter of that defense point, Hammond. But Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal. There have always been rumors about Edgeworth. Forging evidence making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. 
It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Anyway, that's all I know about anything. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you, Detective. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is... Uh, what was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? Nah, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer from West L.A. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show him this, and I'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. We'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there, and nobody will look at you twice, pal. I guess we'll see about that. Looks like the investigation is still ongoing. Oh, I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry. Looks like I'll be stuck in this pit until late tonight. I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, still here. Uh, hello. Why the surprised looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me? What happened to the security guard? Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. There's something I wanted to ask you, Officer Marshall. The scene of the crime. A cold grave for men who've lost their dreams. And me, I watch over them as they sleep. Dreaming of the desert's harsh judgment. He's asleep. Well, should we show this hopeless case something to catch his interest? All right, compadre, count to three! Huh? You gotta do that if you're going to draw evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remind me never to visit Texas. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right in this spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe, that old cow dog. Hmm. He holding a birthday party or something? Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Ah. I think he just miswrote it. Great, Detective Gumshoe. I owe you one. No worries. This just proves it's from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Officer Marshall isn't a detective. He's a patrolman. Something about this case is all wrong. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Well, folks, the clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settlers, strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny, let's have a hoot nanny. Note to self. Police investigations are like settling land. I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. I'll have you know that I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So, why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Could you tell us about the murder? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty doggy there now? 
Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 515. A smiling Madonna told me the tale. One stab to the chest. A fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So, there's no motive! Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the Chief Prospector. But my sister supposedly called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here to this parking lot? So it seems like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. But you said there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the prospect of tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall! Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister... you were... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's a-blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will? Someone's up to something here. But who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence, arranging testimonies, you name it. He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Bambina, it's your sister. Chief Prospector Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't have rustled all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? We're going to take a quick look around. We won't be long. I'll be here, partner. This appears to be the car where the body was found. Quite a luxury car. It just screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. Looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. 6-7S, 12-2. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self. For deductive reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Huh? Looks like someone dropped their cell phone here. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. Hmm. The display is still on the redial button. Now I wonder who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self. A defense attorney doesn't think first. He just pushes the button. Hey! I know that song! Hey, what's going on over there? Ah! Oh, uh, so sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this anyway? It was on the ground over here. Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. The last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea, sorry partner. 
Now, I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those new fangled ringtones. Oh, that? Oh, I'm sorry. That was my phone. What, what, what? Your phone? Yeah, uh, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. <laughs> Wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. I'll be watching you. Uh-oh. I've inside the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. So, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem! I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. I certainly hope not. Oh, by the way, Emma. Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids? The phone that just rang wasn't mine. It was yours. At 518, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry! Can you tell me what you talked about? I... she hung up right away. I see. A detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. 